what's up you guys welcome back to my channel so today i want to talk to you guys about how i passed my comptia a plus core one exam so i actually passed back in february with a 760 minimum passing score that you need is a 675 and here's the proof i passed so i just wanted to give you some tips and strategies on i guess what i did um to actually pass my exam so i will say I did take the exam the first time back in like 2017 when it was the 900 series and I failed it the first time. So this will lead me into my first point. Step number one, understand whether you are a visual learner or a textbook learner. I really think this is important because it will allow you to better understand what types of materials that you need to acquire. So like I said, I failed the test the first time I took it a few years back. And I think it's really just because I just studied straight from a textbook. I use no YouTube videos, no other courses, no nothing. And I feel like that's because I'm a visual learner. I have to see things. I have to see what this looks like, where it goes. So it really depends. There are some people that are hybrid. They need textbook and visual. It just really depends. So make sure you fully understand what type of learner that you are prior to moving forward. Step two. So the next step is making sure you start acquiring your resources. So for me, I get, again, I'm a visual learner. So I used Mike Myers Udemy course. I used Jason Dion's Udemy course on the PBQs and exam questions. And I also use Professor Mezer on YouTube. It's free 99. So why not? And I binge to watch all of his study groups that he holds every single month as well as his um general comptia a plus core one objectives videos just that go in depth about every single objective so it just really depends you if you're a textbook learner you may use exam cram and some other resources or if you're a hybrid you use a mix of both it really again just depends on what type of learner you are but after you figure out what type of learner you are then you can start acquiring necessary resources that you will use to study number three so this isn't really a tip so to speak um or it could be but give yourself a good month or more depending on your experience level so i know there's people that only have you know that that have you know two three years of experience working as like a help desk technician or something that'll study for like three weeks take the comptia a plus core one exam the following week and pass it with flying colors so it, technically and overall it took them a month to, to prepare and take and pass the exam so and some people that come from no technical background whatsoever may need a longer may need longer you know two i say three months max if you're going longer than that then something has to be reevaluated, like in your study tools or the way you're studying but i say a good three months max is the most you should need if you do need a little bit longer um, but yeah, just make sure um, you give yourself at least a good month or longer to study. Number four. So this is like one of my favorite things to do. So make sure that after you study your primary, your core material. So let's say I, you know, for instance, me, I used Mike Myers Udemy course to study for my CompTIA A plus core one exam. After I finished his course, I used Jason Dion's course to study and get myself acclimated to the PBQs I could possibly have. And I also reinforced with Professor Mezer on YouTube. And the reason why I say it's important to make sure you are reinforcing is because different things are explained differently by or things are explained differently by different people so the way mike myers explains things is different from the way jason dion and professor Mezer explains things and vice versa so i think if like there was plenty of times where mike myers was explaining something that i wasn't comprehending too well and then when i heard it explained through jason dion and professor Mezer, i was able to better understand it so that's why i say it's try to reinforce it as much as you possibly can if you're not understanding a concept and you're just not clicking after doing like maybe re basic research or whatever see uh, watch videos on other people explaining the same concept and see if that helps you understand so just make sure that you're reinforcing the same type of information just by you know reading another book on the same topic taking another taking a course again and just reinforcing topics that you need help on just to see if that helps you better understand Number five, start taking practice exams and make sure that you're scoring at least 80% or higher. So I honestly was only scoring like 70, between 76 and like 81 on my practice exams. And I passed, passed my A plus, my CompTIA A plus core one exam with flying colors. So um, I was honestly shocked. But if you feel more comfortable wanting to score like 85% or higher or even higher than that or higher, then go for it. I just say in order to feel pretty confident 
confident in yourself, at least score 80% or higher on your practice exam. Number six, for your practice exams, practice exams. Make sure that you are uh, understanding what you're getting wrong. Don't just say, oh, I got it wrong or whatever. Okay, this is the right answer. No, make sure you understand why you're getting it wrong and why it's wrong because you may get the same question on a exam day and then if you fully don't understand why that answer was wrong on your practice exams it can it can hurt you in an exam if you don't fully understand why this is wrong or why that's right and why this isn't the option and so on and so forth so just make sure that you're fully understanding why what you're getting you know why you're getting stuff wrong especially if it's a recurring pattern why you keep getting it wrong and make sure you understand why the answer is not correct number seven okay so this is a big thing that helped me but I always suggest that prior to taking your CompTIA A plus core one exam or or to or any other certification make sure that you review key material prior to taking your exam and I literally mean like right like exactly prior like when you're in the testing center about to check in give your identification to the worker and all this other stuff be scanning over key things and the reason why I say this is because it'll be fresh in your mind and when you take these exams they give you either a sheet of paper or like a dry erase board or something like that where you can take notes and jot stuff down and things like that so if there's like if you're having a problem remembering like for your comp TA plus core one exam frequencies and you know um uh you know the six step methodology the troubleshooting methodology or some type or the laser printing process or something like that you can make sure that you re like review it really quick and so it's fresh in your mind just long enough so that you can write it down once you actually sit down and start taking your exam and that helps me a lot so I highly suggest doing that um, I know exam cram has like an, a, a cheat sheet that's like in the very front of the book and a lot of people just take that to their test day and just skim, skim over that but I just was thinking about what do I really need to make sure I remember and I just jot it down from memory what I um felt like I might forget during the exam. So I just did that as an extra padding. So definitely do that. Make sure you look over key things that you may be struggling to remember or you know you might have a hard time trying to recall during the exam. Number eight. So this is another big thing too. Use mnemonics if you absolutely have to. I highly suggest them. And I will say like, for instance, with the six step troubleshooting methodology on the CompTIA A plus core one, I, you have to use, you have to remember the troubleshooting steps. It's six steps. And mine's, my mnemonic was I eat toast every Valentine's Day. That was my mnemonic. And it, it sounds stupid, but it helped. And I was able to write that down, like I said, on my dry erase board. So that, and all I did was write, I eat, val I eat toast every Valentine's Day. So that way, when it came time, especially because you do get a lot of troubleshooting questions on the CompTIA A plus core one exam, you do. So it's important that you understand the steps and the order that they're in, but also like the way they ask the questions can try to trick you up. So knowing those steps is very important and um that helped so i will say use mnemonics if you feel better um using it in a song or creating a song to help you remember the laser printing process or something like that do that if you feel better or more comfortable associating it with something you know with the article of clothing or something like that do whatever works for you just as long as you understand it come test day and you remember, you know what it is and how it works and the steps and stuff like that do what you have to do. Number nine. So I truly love this strategy because it was actually Jason Dion who first like talked about it. And I don't know why I never thought about doing that, but skip your PBQs at the very beginning, flag them for review and come back to them at the end. Um, I'm sure for those of you who may be watching this that already follow Jason Dion, you probably already know this, but I'm going to share it anyway, because it's something that greatly helped me. I will say I had about four PBQs at the very beginning and I flagged all of them for review went straight through all of my multiple choice questions by the time I was finished with my multiple choice questions I still had about 40 minutes left on my exam I went through and I had confidence to actually go through take my time finish my PBQs after I finished my PBQs I still had like 30 minutes left so instead of sitting there and just going to end my test I went through all of my multiple choice questions again to make sure that I was satisfied and comfortable with the answers that I selected and then even after I checked those again 
again i still had about 20 minutes left so i went back and checked my pbqs to make sure i was comfortable and satisfied with how i answered those so it's very it it does come in handy it also um it helps relieve your 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 you know your anxiety about the exam it makes you honestly feel more confident because you're like if you're flowing through the exam the multiple choice questions with ease then you get to your pbqs you're like oh yeah i got this this is this isn't hard at all so i definitely suggest skipping your pbqs to the end of course they take longer to do because they're performance based so make sure that you actually allot yourself enough time you don't want to start doing them at the very beginning and then rushing through to finish multiple choice questions so i highly suggest skip your pbqs when you take the comptia a plus core one exam the core two exam or any other certification that you're going for that is very performance that's what number 10 is don't be afraid um utilize study groups and utilize you know connecting with someone who's also studying for the CompTIA A plus core one exam to study with because again like I said in an earlier tip the way someone else explained things can be the difference between you getting a question right or getting a question wrong. Like I said, Professor Mezer explains things in a way that I better understand certain concepts than Mike Myers. So there may be a topic that you're struggling with and a study partner may be, may be able to actually explain it better to you than you know you were getting the information from someone else. So I highly suggest using like a study partner, a study group. There are plenty of them. Um, you can use Facebook and look for A plus study groups. They're, they're, they're all over the place you know, um, CompTIA A plus core one study groups, you know, security plus, like they're all over the place. So you just have to do your research, but I highly suggest finding a study partner or study group. And it's a, it's very supportive and it helps build up your confidence. You learn from other people and everything. So I highly suggest that. Okay, you guys, that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm curious, down in the comment section, let me know what stage you guys are in as far as your studies. Are you are, are you currently studying for the core one a plus exam are you you know studying for your core two are you already fully certified for your comp with your CompTIA a plus certification like what stage are you in i'm really curious um but again i hope you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to like comment and subscribe share with someone you think this may benefit and i will see you guys in the next video